thirsty. Turkey too. Get you. Oh, keep getting it, buddy. So refreshing. <laughs> Good morning, show show. Say good morning. Hey! <laughs> Do we need to start planning something special for you? You better get back over there. <laughs> Thank you, Noli. Thank you. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you know it's for dinner, right? Chicken bites. Baney, chicken bites. Mama. You're looking bodacious, Mama. Hey, Rippy. How you doing, buddy? Good morning. Hi, Papa. We're going to start calling you Papa. Tolly, you look like a tank. Tolly the tank. Coco, y'all look like little mountains. Hi, Vinny. Hi, Katniss. Hi, Cowboy. Hey, Two Socks. How you doing, beautiful boy? How's everybody feeling? How's everybody feeling? It's kind of warm today. How you doing, handsome? I know it. Y'all just nibbling around. How you doing, girlfriend? How you doing? Hi, Merryweather. Mama Merryweather here. Coco. Slider. How's it going, buddy? So, hey, guys. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I'm checking on all of my goats this morning. And, um all of my crops for seed saving. So I may walk you through some of the things that I'm going to be doing because I know I'm getting a lot of questions. So welcome back to the channel. Right now what I'm doing is moving some of the feed troughs. Stop. Why are you pulling on me? And uh, checking some of these goats and I'm gonna be putting out more minerals. Ugh, I know, you're gonna see flies and crap and flogging roosters and all of these things because that's what really what homesteading is all about. And handsome, handsome weathers. So here's the deal, as you know, who's pushing on me? Why are you pushing on my badonka donk? Stop, stop trying to get my attention. <laughs> it's like mom, mom, mom. So anyway, everybody has been fed and is doing really good this morning, but I wanted to come back and check because I've got to move some things and do some different things. And I'm gonna walk you through around some of the seed saving things that I'm gonna be doing today, starting today and soon, okay? But what I'm doing right now is I'm checking all of my goaty girls. I think, okay, okay, I'm not gonna say they're bred. I'm not gonna say they're bred, but they do look like they have been eating a lot of Snickers. Okay, let's just, okay. So I'm gonna have to look, y'all gonna have to help me remember. Um, I guesstimated that we could have babies as early as the last week of October if they were bred pretty immediate when I put Papa Bear Rip out here with them. So I'm not crying wolf, I'm not predicting anything. I am starting to keep an eye on some of them. Now, my goats are very well fed. I'm very well aware all of my animals are. So, you know, you know they can get a little beefy. Um, so you'll see that some of them are um, very friendly. And some of them, while they're friendly, they're not aggressive, they're a little aloof. Honestly, that is the difference between bottle feeding a baby and honestly, just let mom raise them. And there's nothing wrong with letting mom raise them. And there's nothing wrong with having them bottle fed if you're giving them the appropriate uh, milk. But the difference in the end, as far as how they adjust to you and allow you to do things with them or to them is paramount. Okay, so I just wanna mention that in case anybody asks. I typically don't bottle feed unless I have to. But as you know, a couple of years ago, I had an extreme situation, which we may have again. Um, where I had to take in, I had six bottle goats in my house for many weeks and then I transitioned them to the barn, but they were all bottle fed up to 12 weeks. They didn't have, I was their mommy. I was the mama, okay? <laughs> Including Rip, Mr. Uh, Papa Bear here. Say hey, good morning, yeah. So, but there are particularly about four or five girls that even James is like, I don't know, I'm not, we're not feeding them any more than we, when they normally do. And they are looking a little bit bodacious, Patera. I said, I know. So that's what I'm watching for. Uh, what we do plan to do, hopefully, hopefully by October, 
is I'm trying to reposition some stalls. We have this huge overhang, okay? And it's wonderful because it gets a lot of shade. It's cool. Um, and this is where they hang out a lot, okay? Um, but I am trying to, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is stall this side, just one side in at a minimum, okay? Hi, handsome. I know. Uh, you're not as stinky as you were a couple weeks ago and I got hurt. But anyway, um, I'm gonna make this a milk stall for the goats only. If I let the cows over here, I'm gonna have to wipe my face, y'all. I'm sorry. Um, if I let the cows over here, it gets, they're not rough on the goats. Everybody gets along great because the goats go over with the cows in their pasture all over there all the time. But the cows kind of rough house over here. That's how this got damaged. That was a bull though. And you know, it just, they sort of just take over. So I've kind of let the goats have this side, but what I'm hoping to do is make this a small stall, um, a milking stall, so that my big stanchion is for my cows only, and then this will be for milking. Hopefully I'll be milking. I mean, I may not, you know, you just never know. Um, so that's that's a few, that's a close future project coming up. Probably gonna let the weather cool down a little bit, and then, you know, James is a master crafter, carpenter, whatever. <laughs> I still tell you, everything is side goggling and, uh, you know, uh, off kilter, side, what, yeah, think of all those silly words. He does, that's, that's, that's our building, but we do it and it seems to last for the most part. So anyway, but like I said, I want you to look at her. Girl, we're going to have to talk about this. Mm -hmm. How you doing, mommy? How you doing, mommy? How you doing, girl? Is this getting too tight? Uh, yep, time to take that off, sister. We'll be taking that off today. Some of these girls have better hooves than others. Um, you know, we have to really watch that. Some of these goats, you can go several months and everything is great. And then I've got about four or five that just genetically did just, we're not blessed with the best hooves and we have to really watch it. So I'm try that's why I have some of my goats separate. Does that feel good? I know, and this is show show. Um, I had to separate some of these girls um, simply because, I'm, just keep talking with me guys. See what I'm doing here? I'm distracting her. Oh, she's so sweet. She's getting so fat. Come here, come here, come on. Oh, that was better. But anyway, um, some of these girls, like I said, just didn't have the best feet. So, and some of them are kind of, would you stop pulling on my shirt? My, what do y'all want? You want a popsicle? But anyway, some of these girls don't have the best feet and some of them aren't as friendly as others. So we did not choose to put them with Papa Bear here. But guys, I think it's going to be a hoof trimming time in the next week or so. You ready for this? Get, get excited. Get excited. Woo. Noli, where's the rooster? Yeah, just push them back, girl. Now, Noli stays out here with, look here, goats. Goats. <laughs> this is what goats do. <laughs> goats and bulls, okay? Same thing, same thing. Really want this recited. Uh, anyway, we'll get to it. It'll happen. It'll happen, Lord. It'll happen. It'll happen when it's supposed to. Um, the cows stay over in the main pasture over there. Um, I'm not milking them, although I will tell you that in this, let me move away from that. That's so embarrassing. Isn't that embarrassing? Look at this. It's so embarrassing. Um, so I've got these little roosters up here. Okay, gather my thoughts. So I've got these little roosters up here and they are mean as the dickens. Yeah, I'm talking about you. That's right. So he has flogged me now officially for the third time. I think we're going to talk about this. But anyway. Um, Anoli stays out here with all my goats. She is 100% acclim- Yes, she is. The only complaint that I have about Enoli, uh, you need to listen, girlfriend, is he- Ah, you're dripping water on me. Enoli doesn't let you wash- Not, not wash. Enoli doesn't let you brush her. She doesn't like it. She it despises it. Um, so I'm going to have to work with her in the next couple of days again because she's getting some heavy matting on the back. Um, that is one of the issues with dogs like her. Stop pulling on my shirt uh, with the Great Pyrenees. <laughs> and, um, you know, she does good around the top, shoulders and back. But when you get around the, her lower back, hips and tail, she rolls and she runs and she jumps. She does anything that she can. Uh, it takes James and I both to do it. She's not mean or aggressive. She just, 
She's like a little weezer, aren't you, honey? She just wants her own way out here, don't you, girl? No, don't be biting on that anymore. See, what they did, y'all, is they, they got to the wood. The wood behind it. Yeah, they chewed that off, didn't you? Are you the guilty culprit? Are you the guilty culprit? Are you the guilty culprit? Of course you are. I swear on my life, you will end up in Pluto. On Pluto. You look like you need to live on Pluto, you nerd. So, a couple of you were asking about my fly spray. Folks, it's just Dr. Bronner's lavender. Uh, I found it to be awesome. A little bit of soap and water, and I just lightly spray it on my cows. I try to do it, you know, once or twice a week. It does help. It's not 100%. It's never hurt them. But the reason I'm doing it today is because we're supposed to get a lot of rain starting later, like tonight into tomorrow. So, that's a good time to put it on there because the cows will stand out in the rain, and then it just sort of naturally washes them. Lovey right here, if you can see her, she loves to have a bath. She will come over and let me literally just soap her up. Like, I mean, it's not the car wash, it's the cow wash. Um, daffodil down there, not so much yet. And a cookie who is Lovey's um, heifer. Honey, that, that tank won't let you bathe her if you're like dependent on it. So we kind of just have to go with it, right? So anyway, look, she's nosy. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna go through some very basics here. I'm not necessarily going to actively be doing some of the things that I'm gonna talk about because it's not time yet, but I wanna give you a heads up. So in the near future, depending on what I'm doing, I'll, be, I'll film it and we'll, we'll talk about that situation then. But I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it now because see, here's the deal. Your garden may be ahead of mine, right? You may be ahead of the situation. We put our garden in very late this year, almost uh, almost <laughs> very last week of May, okay? So a lot of things that you see, a lot of people already have, you know, have in harvest or already putting away or whatever. So that's why I'm saying I'm behind. So here's the thing. So some vegetables and flowers are a lot easier to seed safe from. This, this is too big, okay? This is... This cucumber is gonna be bitter and disgusting, but it's perfect for seed saving. Don't just toss them out. You can still seed save from them. Ugh, stupid flies. So I, we've got some um, beautiful cucumbers here. We're getting to the very, very last of our cucumbers. So what you're going to do, and I have this on different videos. Um, I don't know if what, what I've titled the videos. I have over 1800 videos y'all, so. Basically what you're gonna do with things that are, uh, that are internally goopy, or internally wet, like pumpkins, cucumbers, tomatoes. So what you have to do to seed safe for those is you basically have to, first and foremost, you have to extract the seed. Cucumbers are super easy. Um, pumpkins, squash, things like that are super easy. What I do is I slice them in half, take out the seeds, squeeze out the seeds, and then I like to actually put them on some type of form of like cardboard or brown like bags so that they can dry out. Um, if you've got the little boxes, I'll tell you what works really good. If you go to Aldi and or somewhere like that and you get their little boxes, you know when you go to Costco or Aldi or places like that and they allow you to take their boxes and they're like half flat boxes, um, grab you some of those if you don't already have them. If you're not going to use them for when you carry your groceries, well, grab one or two anyway because they're ideal for seed saving. So once the seeds start to kind of dry, uh, depending on what you've put them on, I like to put them in those little trays or it's like, like I said, like some um, lunch bags, the brown lunch bags, and let them dry. Now they will start to stick, so you just kind of want to pop them off of that and then you just kind of want to shuffle them around every day, okay, for about two weeks or so, okay? I've got a seed saving video on pumpkin seeds that's really thorough, so that will show you exactly what I'm talking about. But things like cucumber, squash, zucchini, you know, the seeds are inside the fruit or the vegetables, so it's like wet. Well, you want that to dry out. This is why when you buy a lot of seeds from different companies and places, they have them in the little um, paper, packets it's so that they stay dry so that's what i'm going to be doing with the cucumbers i still have some pumpkins from last year that are still perfectly edible so i'm going to finish those i've got three or four left i'm going to finish those up seed safe from those cucumbers 
I have squash out here that are uh, probably more on the spent side, but let me tell you why they're important. They came up from a complete volunteer. So over winter, late winter, I went out to check my blackberry patch, right? And I noticed that I had a squash um, hollowed out with a ton of seeds. And it was from a previous volunteer squash plant that I had, that had just come up. And I just let it do its thing. And there was, I somehow missed this huge squash. It was, it was, it looked like a gourd. You know how gourds dry out and then there's a hole in it. There was a whole bunch of seeds in there. Those seeds are the ones that gave me all of my beautiful squash plants. Now, they're not beautiful now, but I got a tremendous yield this year. So here's what I'm saying. If you, let's go in here for a second. If you have something in your garden that you know for a fact is a volunteer, what do I mean by volunteer? What that means is, uh, it's uh, we're starting to look like a little jungle in here. What I mean by that is, for example, some of my sunflowers, I didn't plant the seeds. I didn't physically hoe the ground, drop the seed, and then get the plant, okay? That's not what happened with a lot of my sunflowers. They are from previous years. They were seeds that fell to the ground. They were actual plants that fell over. See, some of these are getting really heavy. So they would have fallen over like, see that one right there? I still haven't taken it out. That was, a, that's a volunteer. And so I want the seeds from that because it's very strong. Anytime you have anything that's a volunteer, meaning you didn't plant it, it's come up from the previous year or, or, or comes up every year, those are the seeds that you want the most. In terms of your corn, look here, look at this corn coming on. If you have, now look at, I complained about this. Look, morning glory going up. Um, if you've got corn stalks that have come up, see, I've got some on the other side. They're volunteers. I didn't plant them. How do I know? Because they're not, they're not in a row where I planted them. They're just somewhere in the watermelon. Do you see what I'm saying? Those are strong seeds. If you also have certain stalks that produce something very desirable, like double, double ears of corn and things like that, that's really strong too. I'm watching, I am watching birds go in on my elderberry. I'll have to get that elderberry. Now, when it comes to um, flowers, now I did replant most of these this year, but I am do I did that because I lost them due to the lamb's quarter. If you've watched previous videos with me, over the last three years, so this has been my Cosmos. Look at all these bees. Y'all want to see all these bees? Lots of bees love orange bright lights Cosmos. Um, but I replanted all of this this year so I could seed save again from it, okay? But last year I lost this row in terms of it being a volunteer row because I let lamb's quarter take over. And it's completely just snuffed everything out. Don't do that. I don't care how awesome lamb's quarter is and who tells you lamb's quarter is awesome. I'm telling you lamb's quarter is awesome. It's very nutritious. I understand it's better for you than even like spinach, but let it grow in a controlled spot. Don't just let it take over. See, I haven't let it take over. Morning Glory likes to take over. But in terms of the actual cosmos, what happens is, is these flowers will literally just dry and the seeds are literally just like, it looks like a starburst effect. The seeds are literally just right there. And I will go through when this dries out and I will just pull them into large bowls and then I will just lay them out I like to do it when it's pretty dry. So see, this is what I'm saying. Some items that you seed save, and this comes from experience, and um, I, I'm telling you, get the book Seed to Se Seed. to Seed. I'll put it, I think I may have it in the description. If I don't, I'll make sure you get it. Everything is different in terms of how you seed save, okay? So you have to know that. So the wet vegetable, I call them wet vegetables. Things that are, you know, the seeds are inside. You're going to have to extract them. You're going to have to dry them at least two weeks. Sometimes people ferment like tomato seeds. They, they ferment them to have them float and then they take, I've not done that. I, it, it, you don't have to. Um, but you're going to find out by default what works best for you. The easiest things to seed save from, however, clearly, I will tell you, if you're just learning, sunflowers are so easy. Cosmos, crazy easy. Zinnias and Cleome, crazy easy. Corn is crazy easy too. Let me tell you how I do that. Okay, we will just go right here because you can see how big all of this is. This is a volunteer, 
okay? This is a volunteer. I didn't plant this. The, the actual rose that I planted started over here and she's standing by herself over here. This came up on its own. So I know this for a fact. So I know for a fact that I want to definitely seed save as much as possible from this particular stalk. Now, the corn is just now coming on. So we're not there yet. Do you see what I'm saying? A lot of you may be there, I'm not. So what you can do, depending on the weather, like I've told you in a previous video, is the Mennonites come out and they take brown like lunch bags. You know, you brown bag it, right? Take it to lunch. They put brown bags. So I'm gonna have hopefully three on this one, at least two, one, two. They'll put a brown bag over it to protect it, to keep the crows the co uh, from coming in, the koga coming in, it's in Cherokee, um, coming in and taking the seeds or raccoons or whatever. What you can also do, if you choose to, however, you can pick them and you can take them in. Some people hang them up. Some people hang them somewhere really dry and let them dry there. I prefer to let mine dry as much as possible on the stalk. That's pretty much the old timey way. Um, and, but, but then again, you'll be fighting nature. You'll be fighting weather because you don't want them to rot. You'll be fighting raccoons. You'll be fighting deer. You'll be fighting uh, crows and weather. So you have to pick and choose on that. So far, leaving the corn to dry worked works for me. It worked great last year. So that's kind of what I'm going to go for, but you do have options. But if you know you're having dry weather and you know that things are starting to dry out nicely and you think that you can put brown bags over them individually, that's a good way to go. That's why I tell you to stock up on those. All sizes, small like lunch carry, medium size, and even the ones like grocery size where you get your groceries and your brown bags. You will use all of the sizes depending on what you're going to be seed saving. So you can see right here, it's getting pretty spent. I mean, you know, in, in hard times, you'd still eat it, right? But it's pretty hard and kind of getting yucky on the inside, but it's a great opportunity for you to seed save. So this is what I'm saying. So last year I found one of these that had completely dried out, hollowed out, was busted open and all the seeds were there. Found that very late winter, took them in, let them dry, made sure they were dry. And then it's produced all of this beautiful squash this year. So same thing as I told you about the pumpkins. I'm just gonna take them in, split it open, take the seeds out, separate them, put them on something where they can dry. And then you wanna make sure, you know, the next day or so you pop them off because sometimes they'll stick. So that's what I do. Sometimes they'll stick a little bit, not much. It's not gonna hurt them. And then you're gonna put them into cardboard, uh, cardboard box. You can put them in a cardboard box initially if you've got them. And like I said, you'll just be bouncing them around every day. You'll shake it, shake it, shake it. I'll attach that pumpkin video so you see what I'm talking about. The goal though, is just to get them to dry out. You want to make sure they're dry, uh, completely dry before you put them away in a, uh, any type of baggie or paper baggie or anything like that. Little envelopes work really, really well. So there's something else. Now, I've talked about this before in the past. Look at all the butterflies, yeah. So I just sort of let this go. These are all, these are not volunteers, I apologize, but these are seed saved zinnias. It's just a mix. My husband asked if I had any peppermints in here and um, I don't, I need to get some. I don't know if I've got some inside or not. The peppermint striped, those are beautiful. James loves those, those are his favorite. So anyway, what I do with the zinnia, the zinnia is very similar to the cosmos. This, this will completely dry, it'll be pitiful. And inside, you're gonna find, you will once they dry, the seeds are teeny, teeny, tiny. I mean, they're so little. So what I do is I cut the heads off of the, uh, once they start to dry and get really spent, which I'm, no, I'm not there yet, y'all. Um, I clip, okay? I clip, clip, clip. I keep an eye on which ones I want to keep the most. If there's a really beautiful red one or a large pink one, something that's very desirable or like, look, look at this. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna want that. So I'm keeping an eye on this and once it starts to kind of go spent, I'm gonna cut the heads off and I'm gonna put them in a brown paper bag. I just mix, you can mix them up. You can separate them by color, size, whatever you wanna do. I don't do that anymore. I just mix them. I just enjoy that. So see, I've got all different little sizes here and different types. I'll tell you what else is pretty is the cactus 
if you can um, get you some of the ones that look like cact uh, cactus, they are beautiful too. So these are really easy. Like I said, very simple. It's not complicated. Once you do it one time and everything comes back as far as the seed, you're, you know, you're fruitful, you are going to be so proud of yourself. I'm proud of myself and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> look here. Oh, look at this one. Oh, that, look at this one. That's going to be a good one. One. There's, there's about six bees on this and one June bug. Oh, I knocked him off. Sorry, buddy. Knocked him off. Didn't, I didn't do it on purpose. So here are sunflowers. If you've seen from a previous video, cuties. This is all seed saving by me. I didn't buy these seeds. I wasn't given these seeds. What happened was I had several flower heads last year. I seed saved from them separated them i put once they were dry uh, i put them in a mason jar just one big mason jar and you can see in one of the video when i planted i just hoed an entire row here and i emptied out the entire mason jar wasn't sure anything was going to come up and uh it did ginger we're talking about the garden girlfriend you're late come on we got to finish up you can do it girl Ah, oh, good job. Now, if you can do that with trees, life would be better. So basically, what I'm gonna do is come through just like I told you before, I'm gonna select the ones that I want to seed save from the most, the most beautiful color. You can see they're even different sizes. So this is a large variety of different types of sunflowers. I even have the red ones on the other side. So I, like I said, I'm watching and I'm gonna cut the head, cut the heads off. <laughs> And I'm seriously just gonna put them, a couple of them in each of them, you know, a couple of them into a, depending on size, I'll put them in a grocery bag, a paper grocery bag. And I'll mark them, mark the date, close them up, let them dry. In fact, I let them sit all the way from like late summer, early fall, all the, or whenever, all the way till, gosh, late winter. So I know that they're really dry. And then I take them out, I, I make sure I'm separating all the seeds, blah, 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 blah. And then I make sure the seeds are separate in a separate container. And then you can replant them. It's very easy. Watermelon is gonna be the exact same thing, just like I told you with the pumpkins. So clearly you're gonna wait until you harvest the, the, the fruit itself. You're gonna cut it in half. You're just gonna pick the seeds out. Watermelon is really, really easy. Sunflowers are easy, pumpkin is really easy. So you're just gonna take the seeds out, guys. And like I said, just let them dry. And I would let them dry on something like I told you, the cardboard box, something like that, for about two weeks. Shake them every day so they don't stick. And once you feel they're really dry, which is a good two weeks or so, then you just store them how you need to. Like I said, paper, paper, paper. So it absorbs any moisture that you might have missed. So this is by far the tallest corn I've ever grown. Um, I think it's probably going to be it, all the way to the tippy top. It probably did easily hit the 13 feet. Um, so far, all the stalks are doing really, really well, uh, are tasseling really, really nicely. Um, clearly, they're pollinating because we've got corn. Uh, and it, clearly, regardless of my efforts, I still have morning glory coming up <laughs> on them. If you miss what I'm talking about, morning glory is beautiful. Um, but I do try for a long as much as possible for as long as possible to keep it away from the corn because if you just completely let it take over, which it's starting to over here in my watermelon, um, it will pull the stalks down, okay? So we're not there yet. Let's be nosy. Let's open up one. You want to open up one? Let's do it. All right, looky here. This is a good one. So you have your silks at the top and I've pulled back. Clearly they need to develop. So I don't know, maybe another week or two, uh, we could actually be harvesting some corn. I actually do eat this. Um, it's not as sweet like I've told you before. This is your Hickory King. For those of you that missed my previous videos, this is Hickory King. Hi, sister. Everybody's asking about sister. Hi, honey. Oh goodness, we'll talk about her in a second. But anyway back to the corn. So this is what it's looking like. Filling out, not missing a beat. So really, really nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. We still got ways to go. Mm-hmm. 
but I'm telling you, <laughs> it's got good flavor. I really like this corn. I'll tell you what corn I don't like. A couple years ago, I grew ambrosia. Y'all keep it. You ain't hurt my feelings. I'll do Hickory King. It's all right. Okay. Oh, there's a watermelon in here. Oh, cute. So somebody was asking me this morning about my other cat. So I have three barn cats, okay? I have Ginger, who is the poofy one. Oh, somebody's training. I like to hear that. Um, we have Ginger, who's poofy. You have uh, Fritz, who is just fritzy ritzy. And Fritz's full sister is sis full sister is Faith. We call her sister. And she's been kind of aloof. You know, she hung around for a bit, and then she sort of got really kind of feral-ish a little bit, and now she's coming back around. I'll tell you what I think has helped is that every night, um, Fritz comes down to the, Fritz is like living at the house half the time. Ginger comes down to the house. I've started putting out a can of cat food, just one, and she comes up there and she eats with them. She comes down to the house. So she, from time to time, lets me touch her or pet her. Don't you, darling? Yes, you do. She lets me, you know, kind of interact with her a little bit, but I've learned to just do it on her terms. So she's doing good. Okay, let me show you this. I've mentioned it before randomly. I'm gonna show you what the seeds of the cosmos look like as it starts to go to seed. I have some volunteers here that were already coming up before I planted this huge row down here, which means they are ahead of schedule, which means they're starting to go to seed, which means I can show you. So let's look. Okie dokie artichokey. So here you go. So these are the beautiful bright lights cosmos, my ultimate favorite. I mean, I'm just putting it all over the farm. Down here was a bright lights cosmos. Let's come down in here. You see this? Remember I was talking about how it looks like a starburst? You're going to save this. You're just going to come in. Look here. You see? Pop the, that's, that's your seeds. Those are your seeds and they are ready to go. These have been out in the sun for several days. They are very dry, very crispy. Um, and this is what you're gonna want. So by the time November comes, typically November, if it's been dry for several days, all of this, see, here's another one right here next to this bee. Let's see here. See, I just come in and I just, pull, you know, I just do this, see? Just like that, so easy. And I just seed save them from year to year. Okay, I'm, I do huge bowls of it. Okay, it's my favorite thing. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let it come back next year. Now, some things you're going to seed save differently. Clearly, some things are going to come from cuttings. So, if I wanted to expand on my um, elderberry, for example, I would do that through cuttings. And that's pretty easy to do. It, it's very, very um, abundant here. Um, same thing with my corn beads. Um, actually, that's not true. The corn beads, what you would do is you're just going to take the corn beads off and just replant them. Very simple. It's dry already. Um, what else? What else? Tomatoes are their own little beast. So you, you, there's different methods for seed saving tomatoes. Um, some people just take the seeds. Some people just take the seeds. Out. Hope you hit the target. Um, some people just literally just take them out of the tomato, let them dry, like I said, on something like a, like a um, paper towel, whatnot. The key is to have those little paper packets, okay? So it depends on what you're doing, okay? But I want to highly recommend to you the book Seed to Seed. Um, and I'll put it, like I told you before, I'll put it down in the description. I've recommended it for years. It's my favorite seed saving book. Very simple, very affordable. I really think anybody that's into gardening or homesteading whatsoever needs to have this on the shelf because seeds are more expensive. Some seeds are difficult to get. And so you have to pick and choose what's important to you. But if seed saving is important to you, like it is for me in my vault, my seed vault, then a couple of nice books to go along with it is very important. See what happens when you start cleaning out your compost from your uh, chicken coops? Yes, this is the stuff that dreams are made of. So we had a compost from last year. We've dumped on top of it. There's chips in there. It's all breaking down. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Fritz, Fritz, your sisters are helping me in the garden. Yeah, we see what you've been doing all day.
Okay, so do you see real quick right here, these zinnias? I didn't till this. I haven't done anything this, with this. This is one of the little gardens I was letting rest, right? I've actually let my geese grow out in this fenced in little garden area. This is my pumpkin patch, okay, from last year. Well, within you can see some things are coming up on their own. Cosmos, zinnias. So when you see that, like I mentioned before about the volunteers, that means they're just coming up on their own. You want those seeds. So like I said, we're supposed to start getting some serious rain by tomorrow. So this evening when it cools down just a little bit and I get dinner done, I'm gonna come out here. Look at that beauty right there. Almost completely rich purple. There's a few little greens in there, but we're gonna take it. Um, I'm gonna start making elderberry syrup. I have videos on that. It's very easy, so good for you. So it's time to start harvesting elderberry. I did not cut this back last year. I could have. Um, because we got a good amount last year and it's like tripled this year. So what I'm going to do is harvest as much as I can. You can freeze dry your elderberry. You can freeze the berries themselves. I'll tell you what I've talked about before. Try that in a small town. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, oh, I know. Oh, shh. Don't get offended. Get, don't get your panties in a drawer over that. In a, in a, don't get your panties in a drawer. Don't get your panties in a wad over that. <laughs> so listen, um, what you do is you cut these. See, this one's not ready. Do you see this? It still needs a day or two because there's a lot of green. You don't want to process and use the green. That's a no-no. No, 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 no. You want them dark, rich, purple, ugh, that. And it stains, okay? So that's what you want, all right? That's what you want for your elderberry syrup and anything that you're using elderberry for. How do you separate these if you want to? Cut the heads off, cut this off, put it in a brown paper bag, put it in the freezer for 24 hours, 24, 48 hours. Let the berries freeze and then shake them. Shake it, shake it like a salt shaker, baby and then pour them out, and then you can easily separate the green from the d deep, rich purple, which is what you want. There's the trick on that. Now that's for processing. Tomatoes, they're just not coming in as far as turning, so you know that my tomatoes are late. Um, I don't know if I'll do a lot of seed saving this year with the tomatoes. I have a lot of seeds already, but uh, I do have some Cherokee purples that are holding a lot of promise. I have a lot of Cherokee purples this year, so we may be seed saving from that, but like I said, I've only, um, gosh, I've only picked two or three tomatoes at all so far. I, I, gosh, I need to go train, apparently. <laughs> Fritz, you're so busy. It's just so tough being you these days. Just so tough. Look here. Complete volunteer. I did not plant this. This is coming over in my side garden that I'm going to expand to blackberries. Didn't even plant this over here. Have no idea. I guess the birds, uh, clearly the birds were in charge of this. So I guess I was meant to have these today. Aren't they pretty? Thank you for joining us, Fritz. We appreciate you. Free meal. All right. So I'm going to show you this real quick. And this is my Cherokee corn beads. These were given to me years ago from Miss Lou. We keep them going. These are from beloved women. These are from her mother. These are from her sister who was also a beloved woman. Okay, so Miss Lou grows hers and makes tons of corn bead jewelry. Um, and I continue to help her with corn bead collecting and uh, I keep it growing, keep it going as well. So you can see there's different colors coming on. Initially, the corn bead is this color, green, and then it'll turn a white, a gray, a brown. There's like five or six different potential colors. Um, the ones I will, that are my favorite are the rich, dark brown to black ones because they look like little Tahitian pearls. I have several videos on these if you're curious about how to, to collect them and make jewelry with them, how to do that. So feel free to look for that. I have them in my collection of videos, but you can see, oh man, we're getting a lot of blacks. Look at this, beautiful. Sometimes I get a lot of white. Um, sometimes you'll see th this gray color with this, like, almost like a stripe. And then of course you'll see black. They're, it just, it makes such beautiful jewelry. Um, and Miss Lou does a great job. Ginger, honey, are you in my corn beads? Oh my goodness. Well, looky here, so is sister. 
We who is Miss who is being Miss Socialite? Miss Tennessee, it's Miss Oh, sister. Miss Sister, are you gonna win Miss Congeniality in the Miss Tennessee contest? Uh-huh. I've been around those pageant girls. You'd win. Uh-huh. All right, guys, so I'm gonna conclude for now so I can finally get my stinky butt inside and shower and uh, cook dinner for the afternoon and whatnot. But this is just giving you an idea of some of the things that I do and some of the things that you can do and seed safe from. It's not complicated. I, I really love how people garden, eat fresh, uh, even can or put away the food, but they never talk about seed saving. They never talk about next year. It's great that you can harvest all of these tomatoes and cucumbers and all of these things and make pickles and eat them now and live fresh. That's great. That's what, that's ideally the first step. But the second step with that is understanding how you keep that going from your property. So seed saving actually is not difficult, but it is a very, very important skill. So start this year, do whatever you can, even if it's just starting with easy flowers. It's going to teach you sunflowers, the cosmos, the zinnia. It doesn't get any simpler than that, or a pumpkin, okay? Just practice. <laughs> and practice, practice lots of other things as well. So I'm gonna head on in the house and cool down, take a shower so I can smell like a, a real human being again. And uh, we'll have more videos coming your way as we continue to harvest and as we continue to seed save, okay? Just get in there and do it. You can do it. Book will be in the description, Seed to Seed. Like, subscribe, and share. Love you guys so much. Godspeed, and we will see you on the next video.